Hey everybody, it's Doc Green, the Road Scholar, coming back at you with another video. <clears throat> Got my little digital addiction hat going on. Yep, I sell them, but anyway. <clears throat> Guys, I know I've been talking a lot about pol political stuff and everything as far as fuel shortages go and everything, and I really don't like getting into politics a lot, so I'm going to drive this one back to a trucking type of video so that people can get a better understanding of truck driving out here and everything. And, uh... Yeah, I, I still, I'm still, to be honest with you, I'm still going to talk about political stuff every once in a while on my page because it affects us directly as truck drivers. The last one I did was about fuel shortage, explaining why it's really not as bad as the media is making it out to be. Um, but I'll get into you know, that kind of stuff on other types of videos. But I'm going to steer away from that back onto just trucking issues. Guys, there's a lot of questions on how to use personal conveyance out here. Um... And this isn't for Dart specific. This isn't for a particular company or anything because companies can make exceptions to this. But I do want to explain some of the rules of, of personal conveyance because a lot of drivers don't understand. A lot of the safety people, when I say safety, I'm talking about DOT officers and stuff don't understand. A lot of the safety people at certain companies don't even understand the rules. They think they do. They went to a class a couple of years ago and the rules have changed since then and they don't really understand them. So I'm going to go over... Four things you can use personal conveyance for that we know of that's in black and white. It's in writing. FMCSA documents. You can go Google them. But here are the four times you can use personal conveyance. And I'm going to give you some examples of them. The first one is if you're in the sleeper berth, off duty, whatever, your you're, you're rest break, you're on your 30-minute rest break or whatever, you can use personal conveyance. Now, I'm not saying you could break your sleeper berth because you've got to spend at least eight hours or two hours if you're going to break it or 10 hours in sleeper berth to get a reset or whatever. But you can, as long as you get those those qualifications for the sleeper berth in, if you're off duty or you're on a 30-minute break or you're in the sleeper berth terminal and everything and you want to go to get to get something to eat like a restaurant or a or, or entertainment, if you want to go see a movie or you want to go play slot machines or you want to go whatever whatever you do for entertainment, you can use personal conveyance for that. Let me say that again. If you're on a break or you're off duty, you can use personal conveyance and use your truck to go to restaurant or entertainment. <clears throat> I'm not saying you can use your personal conveyance to go take your truck to a maintenance shop to get something fixed. Well, I'm off today. I'm going to run my truck up here to go get fixed. Uh, because that way, whenever I go back on, I got my full 70 back. No, you can't do that. That that if you're doing something to maintain the truck or something, that is a work-related thing. You can only use it for going to a restaurant or entertainment. That's the first reason. Number two, a way to use it is if uh, you're in a company terminal, loaded or not, and you're going to your home or place of residence, you can use personal conveyance, loaded or not. Now, I want to get that clear because a lot of people think just because you got a load on you, you cannot use personal conveyance. That is not true. The, the personal conveyance doesn't say anything about loaded or unloaded. It says if you're going from your terminal to home or from your home to a trucking terminal, your, your company terminal, not just any trucking terminal. Because some guy get on here and try to be smart, I like to say that. Your company terminal to your home, loaded or unloaded, you can use personal conveyance. There is no distance on that. If you're going from, if let's say for instance, and I've had to do this before, so believe me, it, it is legal. If you're at a terminal in, let's say, Illinois, my home terminal, I think it was actually it was actually in Egan, Egan, uh, Michigan, and I'm going home. I can use personal conveyance for that. And I had to because there was one time I had to get home for a, a, a court date. They could not find me a load to go home. I have no choice. I'm under court order to get home for this court. I've already got court date and everything set. I can't just reset it. I had to be home. They knew I had to be home. They couldn't get me home with a load or anything on time. They told me I had to wait till the next day. I couldn't wait till the next day. I had to be in court the next morning at 8 a.m. I literally had the personal conveyance all the way from uh, from uh, Michigan, or I'm sorry, Minnesota, down to Dallas. Now, is that stretching the limits of reasonability? 
Under most situations, probably so. But legally, federally, you're allowed to do that. Now, the exception to that, or if you're going from your home to your company terminal, your nearest company terminal, uh, or to your company terminal, um, you can use personal conveyance. Okay? You cannot take a load. Now, that's loaded or unloaded. Even if I have a load on my back and I'm going from my terminal to my home, I can personal conveyance. I cannot use it to go from my home if I want to start the next day, I want to take my load out and go ahead and start delivering it. I cannot use personal conveyance to go from my home to the delivery point. I have to, you have to go back on duty. We all should know that. Okay, but you can use it as long as you're going from terminal to home or home to terminal. So if I'm going, let's say I'm in Lancaster, Texas, and I'm going home, and I got a loaded trailer. I live on some land, so I got a loaded trailer. Dart doesn't allow this because you're not supposed to take the loaded trailers home. But let's say you're with a company that does, or you have your own authority or whatever. You can go from your terminal to home with a loaded trailer. Next morning you wake up, and now you're going to go to your delivery point, you're back on regular duty. If you're going to go from your uh, terminal to home, and the next day you realize you got to go back to the terminal, the trailer's still loaded, you can still be on personal conveyance and go back to your terminal. Two instances you can use personal conveyance. The third one is a little bit trickier for people to understand. If you go to a shipper and you're getting loaded, and this happened to all of us, I'm sure, at one point, if it hasn't, it's going to. You're getting loaded and it takes too long and you run out of hours. Can you use personal conveyance to go to a truck stop? Yes. Truck stop or near safety, safe, safe place to park. Safe and reasonable. Safe and reasonable. Here's where that comes in, the reasonable part. If I get loaded at a shipper and I drive to a truck stop and that truck stop is full, can I go to the next truck stop? Yes, you can. You can use personal conveyance to go to the next truck stop. And you can keep doing that until you find a reasonable truck stop, one with parking spaces that you can park at. Now, if you get pulled over, are you gonna have, you may have a problem trying to explain that because the DOT officer will look at you and say, hey, that last truck stop you were at, you just passed two truck stops. You just passed a pilot that loves back there while you're sitting up here saying you're trying to get to the Petro. If you went into, the, and you do have to go to the nearest one. If you go in there and they're full, take your video camera and film the parking lot and say on the video, such and such a day, such and such a time, parking lot is full, going to the next one. That way, if you do get a ticket, you can go to court and you can fight it. It's not reasonable for you to be able to park in a truck stop that doesn't have parking spots. So you can go to the next one. That does not mean that you could go from a shipper. Let's say you still have hours. I go from a shipper down the road. I get to a truck stop and it's full. And now I'm almost out of hours. Um, now I could go PC and go to the next truck stop. No, you cannot do that. It's from the shipper to the nearest one. Not from truck stop to truck stop. Once you left that shipper, you destroyed your PC trying to get to a truck stop. And remember, it's got to be the nearest reasonable truck spot stop. So don't go into, uh, and I've seen drivers do that. They go into a place, everything they complain about on YouTube. I went in here and there was no truck parking. I had to get to the next one. I used personal conveyance and, and drove. That's bad planning. If you knew you were leaving the shipper going directly to, a, to the nearest truck stop, you should have went PC right then. Don't use up your hours. Go PC right then. Get to the nearest one. Film it and everything. That way if DOT pulls you in and they try to shut you down or whatever, you got video proof and everything else. No tickets. You know, I, fight it. Go ahead. Get your lawyer. Go, go fight whatever. You'll win. That's in writing what it says. I can go from a shipper to the nearest and reasonable, safe and reasonable, the nearest safe, safe and reasonable parking room. Now, another one that you'd use uh, back up to personal conveyance, uh, you can also use it to go from a drop yard home, a trailer drop yard to your home or your home to a trailer drop, drop yard, which means, that, like, remember I said terminal earlier, you can also do it for trailer tra trailer drop yard or trailer, trailer drop locked. That means if you go somewhere and you take your trailer in and let's say you're taking it to, a, 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 I don't know, you're dropping a trailer at uh, Walmart and your, your house is like 35, 40 miles away. You can drop that trailer, go on personal conveyance from there, and go home. And you can use personal conveyance from there to go home, back up to that trailer spot the next day to get another trailer or the, the one you dropped, whatever. 
Here's how you're gonna have to prove that though. They're gonna say, well, how do we how do we know you dropped your trailer there? That's what the log is for. Whenever you go into a place and you go, I dropped this trailer here and I picked up this trailer here, that makes it a drop trailer, a, tra a trailer drop lot. You dropped one trailer, you picked up another one. You dropped one, you bobtailed out. You know what I'm saying? That's a trailer drop lot. Now, if you go into a yard and you're getting and you go with, let's say you're driving trailer number one. And you, your book shows I was I had trailer number one, and when I left, I had trailer number two. That's a drop lot. You dropped one, picked up another one. If you go in there, and you got trailer number one. You come out, and you got trailer number one. That's not a drop lot. You're just getting loaded. You can't personal conveyance out of there. It has to be a drop lot, trailer drop lot. The good part is they didn't define what a trailer drop lot is. So let's say you're going to a truck stop and you rent a space at a truck stop to park your trailer. Can you park your trailer there, personal conveyance onto your house? Yes, that's a trailer drop lot. You dropped your trailer. Can you bobtail back there the next morning on a personal conveyance? Because you're going, you know, yes, you can bobtail back up there because it's going to show you bobtailing in, picking up a trailer, and then leaving. So you bobtail in, personal conveyance. Once you hook up, you're on duty. The fourth reason that you can do a personal conveyance is if a safety official tell instructs you to move. I didn't say a police officer. I didn't say a DOT officer. I said a safety official tells you to move. Now, what that means, if you're on a, let's say you're on a yard somewhere um, and you part and the security comes along and tells you you got to move uh, to the other side of the building. Hey, can you move around there? Can you, you're going to have to, you know, go leave or go, go to a nearest truck stop. You got to leave our yard. Can you use personal conveyance? Yes. Under reason number four, safety official told you to move. It doesn't have to be law enforcement, which is a lot of companies, because even I think even Darts got on their thing where law enforcement tells you to move. It doesn't have to be law enforcement. It can be any safety official. If it's a safety official of that private company, it's a security guard or a yard manager or something, and they tell you to move, you can personal conveyance out of there. Um, those are the four reasons in writing, black and white, that you can use safety um personal conveyance now there are exceptions to that your companies can place limitations on how far you can drive company policy will supersede these your company policy can say we don't do personal conveyance and there's some, a lot of companies out here that don't allow it because they don't understand the rules they don't want to get into it they don't want to try to uh, try to even understand it there's no we're just not dealing with it then there's other companies that limit the amount of miles you can drive or the amount of time you can be on personal conveyance. Your company policy supersedes, and that's in writing inside the document of the FMCSA. And you can go to, uh, if you go to truckingwinds.com, they got a whole class on it over there, truckingwinds.com. You can go look at their thing. You can also look up uh, FMCSA, uh, type this in Google, FMCSA personal conveyance. Go down there. Question number 26, ask about personal conveyance, and it puts it in writing what is allowed, what is not allowed. And you can, and you need to have that document in your truck because you may get pulled in by a DOT officer, and guys, just because they're DOT does not mean that they, they're fully trained on this stuff. Every state has it, and every state tries to do their own little law around there. You know, oh, no, we don't recognize that. No, no you, that's federal. You got to recognize that. However... Your company policy in the FMCSA question answer on number 26, it even says your company policies can supersede these rules. They can tighten them. They can make it so you only have a limited amount of miles you can drive or a limited amount of time you can drive. Other than that, they can't. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, what I'm saying, other than that, a DOT officer cannot tell you how far you can drive if you're going to go... Uh, for entertainment or a restaurant. They cannot tell you how far you're allowed to drive to go from your terminal to home. It is not regulated. It is not defined on how far you can go. The only exceptions to these rules is if you are fatigued or ill. So if they, if, let's say you're driving down the road, a DOT officer pulls you over and he says, man, how long you been driving? Oh man, uh, I'm sorry, man, I was, I've been driving, I'm on personal conveyance and I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I was just a little bit tired and I just kinda, boom, you said you were tired. You admitted you were fatigued. Now you're illegally using personal conveyance. You cannot be fatigued or ill using uh, personal conveyance. 
Now, can they say you are personally, uh, you are fatigued because let's say you ran out of hours and you're using it to go from your terminal to home. Well, you're already out of hours, so you're fatigued. They don't know that. There's no way, they, they are not sleep doctors. They cannot, they cannot define that. There's no way they can prove that you're tired. As long as you're within the legal aspect, they can't. Now, if you pull over, they go, hey, how you feel? Oh, man, you know, a little tired out here. Boom, they got you. Period. They got you. Now, some companies have different regulations on how you can use it. Like our company, um, they they have on our personal conveyance the things you can use it for and what you cannot use it for. And you have to go in there and click. Um, let me see if I can bring it up real quick and see exactly what ours are. Let's say I'm here. You I'm going to go to off-duty, personal conveyance. Then it gives me a list of things I can use. I can use not in commercial use. I can use forced in, forced in, forced move by law enforcement, forced move by shipper receiver. That pretty much covers all of it. That pretty much covers all the reasons I need. Now, I can say personal conveyance, not in commercial use, going to my house. You're going to have to specify exactly what you're doing. So, those are the reasons. Actually, every company should really reprogram these things to give out those reasons. Going from shipper to home, from home to shipper, uh, going to entertainment or restaurant. They should put that in there so that you don't have to sit there and try to explain to the police officer why it's legal. But, you know, these are the rules. These are the regulations. You go to the FMCSA question. Like I said, look up FMCSA personal conveyance. Go down to question number 26. Or usually it comes up in the Google search. You just scroll down a little bit and it's, you'll see it. Question number 26. When can I use personal conveyance? Print that out and put that in your truck. Because with that police officer or that DOT safety officer or whatever that's suspected you tries to shut you down, you can show him the law. Now, if he shuts you down, you have, you have, you have a legitimate defense. These are documents you should carry in your truck, period. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to go over that and get a little bit back into trucking and everything. Y'all can argue with me all you want to in the comments below because I know it, it seems like no matter what I put on here, how I put it, what I show or something, there's always going to be somebody that's going to argue with me or deb try to debate me or whatever, try to correct me. I'm not telling you anything out of my mouth. I'm not trying to play word games with the law. I'm telling you what the law states. You can go look it up yourself. Again, FMCSA, uh, personal conveyance. Google it, go down, you'll see a little question number 26 that tells you exactly when you could. I'm just using the words that they use, almost verbally, almost specifically copying their words. You know, I might be adding in a little here, there's, or whatever's to it, but that's that's the law. So you can argue with me all you want to. For you guys, I, I get them every time I put anything. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. But you can argue with it all you want to. I'm just telling you what FMCSA said. I'm telling you what the document says. I'm telling you what the paperwork says. I'm telling you what they got in their law books and or their rule books. And you can argue it all you want to. That's their rules. It's in black and white. Put it in your truck. And that way, because you may get it, you know, you get something, you, you guys, we all know, we got DOT officers out here that are well-trained, and we got some that are not so well-trained. Um, some of these guys, I don't think, have updated. They may get a little memo or something that someone else interpreted for them, and they're trying to put out here. That doesn't make it right. Anyway, guys, I'm gone. Y'all have a good one.